You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for December 28th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where our election recount funds are always properly accounted for, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Friends out there all over campaign land, you're using campaign funds for no. liquor and and hotel rooms, or or travel, or going to uh, Green Party conferences, or <laughs> uh, this is I, I'm I'm sort of tipping my hand that we're going to talk a little bit about the amazing Jill Stein slush fund uh, later in the podcast. But now we should talk about something else, Blue Gal. Well, yeah, we should. And and also I wrote about Duncan Hunter today because he's the throw the wife under the bus over the campaign funds thing. So we'll it's get to that. It's a pity because, that. you know, he has such good cookie batter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. We want to thank everyone who has sent Christmas cards and contributions f- over the holidays and to let you know, it is not too late to send me a Christmas card. I no. love getting belated Christmas cards. I do, too. And we are uh, going to end the GoFundMe on December 31st, this Monday. Uh, I don't want to get into the 2019 tax year with GoFundMe stuff. So right. uh, we're going to shut it down uh, at midnight on the... 31st of December. And begin our so, legal defense fund on, on the January, <laughs> no. January 1st. No? No? Okay. No, no, no we okay. don't. We actually don't need a legal defense fund. Isn't no, that, we don't. You know, part of the, it, it's a big advantage when you're not dealing with multi-million dollar slush funds. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the big advantages, right? Yes, it is. Ah, so yeah, we're not, we're, we're not dealing with that, but we are uh, very grateful to everyone who has contributed. Um, We've also gotten some very nice gifts in the mail. Uh, I particularly was tickled by the one where someone sent a, you a little bottle of scotch and a me a yarn gift certificate. So we both got our drugs. Yes, we did. <laughs> so, yes, we did. And we enjoyed and them thoroughly. So Thoroughly. So thank you very much for everybody who sent us something. Uh, it's not too late. Uh, but for the GoFundMe for my medical bills, which is on our website, uh, and it's also at the top of my Twitter stream, mm-hmm. I've pinned it to the top, at Blue Gal. You can find the link there. Uh, if you want to help me pay off my medical bills, we are getting close to the goal. Uh, I think we were at 70% last time I checked. So that's amazing. Thank you very much for that. And uh, it's not too late, but it will be too late after Monday. So thank you very much for doing that. Uh, Drift Glass, we also want to uh, highlight a fake advertiser. (laughs) Yes, we do. (laughs) Speaking of the end of the year, uh, this week is once again brought to you by our favorite presenting sponsor, most prosperous one, really most profitable by by every measure, uh, where the good Lord split you, emergency farewell party supplies. 2018 was a shitty year that ended on a hopeful note. So buy it a sheet cake and send it on its way to history books. This week's offer code is Prog Spring. Prog Spring. Prog Spring. As yeah. in a cell phone signal that sprung right off of a cell phone tower yeah. outside of Prague, right? Yes. Uh, that apparently belonged to a guy named Michael Cohen. Might have been a different Michael Cohen. No, it wasn't a different Michael Cohen. For a different, no, no. <laughs> okay, again, this has not been independently verified by the professional left. Uh, because we don't do shit like that. Uh, we ju- we're just kind of a rip and read service, rip and read and interpret sort of the artistic merits of each story. Uh-huh. Uh, but it does look a lot like um, 2019 is going to be a hell of a ride. Yeah, uh, and, I can uh, I can say that I did I did love the note we got from someone saying, "I just can't wait for you guys to cover the hearings." Yeah, yeah. And I thought, oh yeah, we're going to get to do that in the coming year. So. We're Send five dollars. You better you better coffee us up, folks, if you want to hear us laugh our way through the uh, House Oversight Committee hearings. We're yeah. looking forward to that too. We're, we're going to call it slow burn. Uh, and, <laughs> no, we're not. No, we're not. It's already been done. The real real time coverage of uh, I don't know what we're going to call it. Too. <laughs> I like to call it speed burn. Actually, yeah, that's true. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, burn bag or something let's, like that. Let's burn through these, uh, particularly these um, cabinet members. Oh, Bet- starting with Betsy DeVos and yeah. moving on. So, all right. So we've got stuff to talk about today. H- Happy New Year, everybody! Happy New Year. This everyone. is the last year, uh, the last episode of the year because it's the last Friday of the year, and as mm-hmm. you know. We pride ourselves in not missing an episode. And so this is not a best of or a compilation or any. This is a fresh, hot show just for you guys. Yes. Uh, and we want to talk about a fellow blogger first um, named Batoshio. Yes. Over He's at- had quite a week and we're very proud of him. Batoshio is over at Vagabond Scholar. Uh, mm-hmm. But Tocho is one of the bloggers of the old school. Very old he is, school. He's old school blogger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have known him. We've met him in real life. Uh, mm-hmm. He's just a wonderful, kind, gentle, uh, uh, ferocious human being. Mm-hmm. And we're proud to call him our friend. And every year, uh, for many years now, uh, he has done the Jonathan Swift annual blogger post, uh, a, a summary of the best of the smaller blogs as nominated by the smaller blogs themselves. Right. And Jonathan Swift was another old school blogger. He was. Mm-hmm. Who passed away. His first name was Al. And he was uh, a friend to many and certainly a supporter of small blogs. And he did this. And Batocchio uh, picked up the mantle from him when, when he passed away. So, mm-hmm. uh, and Batocchio has done it every year, every year since. And that post is up at Vagabond Scholar. And you should go and take a look at it. Back, this is uh, back when the liberal blogosphere was a more of a community probably than it is now. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that's fair to say. Although yeah. uh, I did like that uh, it seems like the beginning of every show in the past few weeks you've mentioned Charlie Pierce. But Charlie yeah. Pierce mentioned you <laughs> on Twitter this week. <laughs> yes, because... he did. Yeah. Don't make, I, by the way, I have a nice uh, winter cold. If you can't tell, I sound a little bit oh, we like both Tom do. Everybody right in my chest and in my throat. So if if you hear something that sounds a lot like uh, Betty Davis at 80. That would be me. <laughs> yes. uh, and, but I, I'm going to just lean into it and, and go with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, uh, he has a, uh, a monster post over at um, uh, Digby's place over at Hullabaloo. Uh, Batocchio does. Batocchio does. Right. Uh, right. But, oh, I, was, I just I, wanted to get back to Charlie Pierce because yes. Charlie Pierce said, uh, Drift Glass, as yeah. Ezra Klein asked, you know, which single shingle bloggers do you read? Yeah, old school. What about the old school bloggers? The single shingle, the independent bloggers. And I'm like, Ezra, first of all, I met <laughs> Ezra. I met I, you used to be a blogger. I mean, it right, really is kind right. of astonishing that Ezra Klein, uh, who does uh, his Vox does great work when it comes to graphs. And there's a couple people right for the videos. They do. They do you, get to the real crux of a lot of issues via video as well. Yeah. But he really has, you know, imbibed deeply of the Beltway, uh, the sense of perpetual the largesse of the Beltway. Yes. Yeah. yes. Like, oh, my God, Republicans are being so misbehaving. Oh, my God, I was wrong about <laughs> Paul Ryan all along. If only I'd been warned about Paul Ryan. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. Now, I, I will say this. Ezra Klein, uh, I met him. Uh, he was uh, around in Chicago when I was working with a group to set up a uh, manufacturing high school in Chicago. And he interviewed us for that issue. Um, so I actually uh, I knew Ezra back in the Chicago day when I think Chris Hayes was also in Chicago. Uh-huh. Um, shoe leather reporter for The Nation, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not like he doesn't know. Um, I believe Ezra is also a participant in the great Jern list scandal. Uh, which was oh, that's the that's real old news. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, see, that's yeah. how you know. That's how you know you're independent. But that's how you know the, in, the, in, <laughs> the old school people. Because we were the ones who were never invited to the journal list. I was, I was invited oh, actually. To, yeah, I got a. See, you didn't know that about me. You. She always does this. Me. She throws her Harvard degree and her invitation to journalist up in my face, <laughs> and makes me feel sad. Yeah, it was no big deal. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, no. no. Batocchio though has a post monster not post. just the jonathan swift post no, but no. another post about conservatism yeah it's and it's up at digby's blog which is another old school single shingle blogger go to go we're going to town this week yeah everything old is new again and uh i think that's just because we are re- entering the watergate era again we are. and so people i'm so are... old i remember when digby had a comment section yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is kidding. We're really going down memory lane anyway. We are. We're not going to do a best of show. We're just doing an well, old fart show is uh, what we're doing. Here. And I would have included my uh, 
profoundest kudos and strongest recommendations in the comment section of Atocha's post because it is a right. monster, a comprehensive, all inclusive tapestry uh, that pulls in all the threads you could ever want. It's something, it's one of those posts you want to carry around in your back pocket. Right. Uh, for when, let's say, you have a really nationally recognized podcast and you're interviewing a conservative who starts to lie to you about shit. Uh, you could either backpedal and go humana, 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 or you could come armed with something like Patocho's post and say, no, that's what you're saying is bullshit. Boom, 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 and push back at them. Because right now, it's really kind of important that we not, um, that we recognize that we're in a war of sorts. And it's time to stop with the quibbling and the fence sitting and the maybe we can all get along. Maybe we can find common ground. No, pick a side or step aside. That's That's the place we're at now. But we're going to put a post uh, link to Batocho's both the uh, John Swift uh, summary and Batocho's monumental conservatism post up at uh, the podcast site and our individual websites. And I want to talk about art and freedom and Ursula K. Le Guin for a minute. All right. Go right ahead. Uh, let's start with art and freedom first. You and I sojourned for a day. Uh, we took a quick trip to an art museum. We did. We went to the St. Louis Museum of Art or SLAM the uh -huh. St. Louis Art Museum, slam.org, and saw some prints from 1960 to today. And it's a special exhibit, and it was fantastic. We had a wonderful time. We did. We had, and part of it was, this must have been months ago. Um, we were looking at our calendars that were getting full um, and realizing that you know, life during wartime, which is what this mm -hmm. feels like. I'm not contending that we're wounded or being shot at or anything like that, but we are having symptoms of people who are living during a traumatic period that doesn't seem to stop. Mm -hmm. we're, we're having all the coping issues that I'm sure every one of you is having and millions of Americans are having. You got to go out and find a thing to do with your brain other than fretting about Donald Trump and the Republican Party and the future of the country and the future of the planet, frankly. You don't right. give up, but you got to find a way. And for us, we just said we have to go get drunk on art. Right. You have to. We have to go find a place that's just quiet and full of beautiful things that we can appreciate and laugh about and go, Jesus Christ, they put that up in an art museum? Um, <laughs> yes, there were a couple of them. There were a couple of them that we just went, yes. really? <laughs> I will never understand Mark Rothko. There, I said it. I said it. I understand that people appreciate Mark Rothko. I appreciate the, their appreciation. There's no room for an argument here. This is a matter of taste. Right. Uh, right. But we saw many, many beautiful things, including commercial print, that were just amazing and, and lovely. And it did put me in mind, he said, speaking of uh, nostalgically of Science Fiction University, which will be making a comeback this year, I really hope. Um, it put me in mind of the Space Merchants. Oh, Yeah. Um, a book about advertising mm -hmm. and the day advertising takes over the world. And and most importantly, it put me in mind of the fact that in Mad Men, that there was a time during the 40s, 50s, and 60s and, and on that people who might have otherwise found their way into writing romantic poetry or doing great, great sculptural works or great printed works went into advertising. Because you can make money doing that. Persuading people through visual media, through words, um, became an incredibly profitable thing to do. Now, you were selling them crap, but that's where they went. And there's a whole passage in the Space Merchants about how this is what happened. And, the, and uh, uh, there are an, an alarming number, or not a surprise, it's a, a otherwise surprising number of science fiction authors who worked in advertising. Mm -hmm. Because putting words together to persuade people of things is what advertising is. And just seeing the care and beauty of advertising that is done correctly and then seeing how it is manipulated by artists who want to um, make a point. The whole wall of African-American ads. Wig ads and wig ads. skincare bleaching ads were, that were posted it was across the wall. Yeah. yeah. And they were all carefully manipulated, but not you didn't. They didn't lose their meaning, right? But it had to be a wall full of them for you to be overwhelmed by what was being sold and to whom and why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was the idea that you can, um, you can use art to do amazing things, and mm -hmm. the difference between politicians and admin who dabble in art, whether it's verbal or visual. 
and visual and verbal artists or sonnet makers or sculptors who become political. Those are two very different groups of people. And I happened across this uh, article in Brain Pickings about Ursula Le Guin's impression. This is a, a speech she gave. Um, her impressions of uh, th the late Ursula Le Guin, I should say, of how to save books from profiteering and commodification. And this quote jumped out at me for this podcast. Any human power can be resisted and changed by human beings. Resistance and change often begin in art. Very often in our art, the art of words. To get fame and money for the sake of which I wrote it was necessary to hide the good and display the evil. That's it. She opens it with a quote from Leo Tolstoy. That's mm -hmm. the quote. Mm -hmm. And the idea that it is it falls to us, especially during these times, people who have a gift for visual or or words or anything artistic, it falls to us now to look over the horizon and see the future as it could be. Uh, both dystopically and and hopefully, and tell people here and now what we see and how to get there mm -hmm. using our art, using our words, mm -hmm. uh, and inspire people, make them feel like getting up in the morning and coming back to the fight and not giving up. And I find that just bathing in art for a day um, really refreshes my soul and makes me feel better. Yeah, yeah. And you and I had a, a lovely time. I, I it struck me though uh going to that museum with you that you and I get along really really well. <laughs> yeah, we do. Our our energy mm -hmm. level is almost exactly the same and we could go through this exhibit and a couple of other exhibits and uh be ready to go. I would you know we mm -hmm. and I it it also, every time I go into an art museum, I'm reminded yes. of my mother, as you know. You bring your, you, you bring your mother with you. I you bring really my do. mother with me. My mother is was an artist. My late mother was an artist. My dad's an artist. Uh, but going through uh, a museum, my dad didn't talk much when he went to a museum, but my mother would talk about everything yes. she saw. And uh, it was... It was a remarkable week because Sister Wendy passed away this week. I know. I know. And we always compared my mother going through the museum to Sister Wendy. But it was Sister Wendy um, with it meets Penthouse in a way yeah. <laughs> because my mother knows every artist and who they slept with and how many illegitimate children they have and – was there a Mrs. Picasso? Yes, there was a Mrs. Picasso, but then there were many women who were not Mrs. Picasso. <laughs> yeah, the way you describe her and, and the times I talk to her, she always seems slightly scandalized by her own knowledge. <laughs> yes, she was. You know, I think she just, was scandalized, but she was also, uh, she she was a mixture, like, like every woman of her generation who yes. was born in the 30s, the late 30s. And mm -hmm. came of age in the 50s, then leading into the 60s. So that she wasn't a baby boomer. She was lost generation. Yeah. But the world twisted on her. Where as she was going through high school, it was expected that you would become a teacher or a nurse. And then right. you would become a wife. Right. When she had me on her 24th birthday, every other girl who she graduated from high school with had already had a child. At 24, she was the old maid. She was the late bloomer having a child, her first child, at age 24. Mm -hmm. And then the world just turned on her in terms yep. of... You can be anything. You can do take over the world. You can, you know, and and... Her expectations for herself seemed um, a letdown, like she w might be letting down the revolution by just being a mother and a teacher. Right. And I think there's a whole generation of women who felt utterly betrayed by that. That that we got caught. Right. Yeah, they got, got caught, caught in, in this trap and mm -hmm. a trap of free a trap of freedom. You know, it was it was no, no, we're going to burn our bras and we're going to be uh, feminist now. and. That's great, but you've left behind a generation of women who have a lot to offer and were not right. really given that opportunity. So right. anyway, sh uh, there she was in 1968 with three kids, and then she lost one. And then, and it's a long story, but uh, she had her ups and downs in life, and 
going to an art museum with her was, as I say, Sister Wendy with all of the scandals <laughs> that, that every artist that she came across had. Uh, and so it, she would have been a much better docent than the one that was there. And <laughs> that poor guy, we poor saw guy. this docent, and he was a retiree who clearly loved the museum. Yes, but uh, this show was out of his range. This this yes, is yes. Modern Prince from 1960 to the present. So yeah. yes, they had Andy Warhol soup cans up there because you kind of have to. They had yeah. a lot of things up there that were political, that were. Um, Racial, racial cultural. and off and countercultural. Right. Right. Um, and, and he was out just of his really, league. <laughs> they had like like a Xerox manual. Yeah. yeah. That was gorgeous. Yep. They had a, a, a book of fold out photographs of the sunset strip on both sides of the street that were just this is how beautiful this basic function of a presentation printing. can right. be. Right. Yeah. And he was way he was out just of his not depth. he was yeah. not there to talk about that. But no. so he would say things like, Now there's not much to see here because this is minimalism. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Moving on. Moving on. This is the yeah. one where he makes it with the dots. He made the painting yeah. with the dots. See? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we see the dots. That's great. We see the dots. So And he didn't he didn't detract from no, it. it was God just bless kind of him. He was adorable. trying. He yeah. was trying. Really yeah. trying. You're a volunteer on, you know, on a holiday right. coming in to right. take a bunch the of people day around. After to Christmas the coming in to yeah. show people art. Yes. So yeah. uh bless his heart, as my mother would yeah. say. <laughs> well, and I want to point out that Ursula Le Guin was born on October twenty first, nineteen twenty nine. Yeah, yeah. And she, so she was beautifully about being a mother. Her yeah, she did. essays about writing and motherhood are so worth reading that being a mother and having children around your, you know, ankle biters around you creating chaos while you're trying to put order on the page uh, and how that sharpens your writing and how it improves your art. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. It's well, I highly recommend reading her essays about writing. They're just amazing. Um, she also wrote science fiction. I understand. Yeah, she did. Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, just a little like bit. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to close out with her with one more quote, sure. if I may. Uh, this is from also from her writing. Hard times are coming hmm. when we'll be wanting the voices of writers who can see alternatives to how we live now, can see through our fear-stricken society and its obsessive technological technologies to other ways of being, and even imagine real grounds for hope. We'll need writers who can remember freedom, poets, visionaries, realists of a larger reality. I love that last last yeah. part. Realists of a larger reality. Realists That's of a larger what we reality. Need. We need that. And and you bring that every day, Drift Glass, in your blog. I know you do. Well, golly, yeah, and, Blue and, Gal, thank and you. And again, thank you so much for being such a wonderful partner in life and for well uh, taking me to this art museum. And uh, just it, it was also a stressful week. Just taking a trip anywhere is just a little bit stressful, I think, for both of us. We're both kind of homebodies and getting out of your comfort zone a little bit when you go to another city and do stuff. And I just felt no pressure to uh, tell you, Oh, I'm kind of out of gas. Now we got to go do something else. Yep. And then uh, we came, we came back and uh, this was the day after Christmas. And then yesterday, Thursday, our power went out for eight hours. <laughs> yes. Boom. And I was cranky as hell. I was just, I had to work. I had to write for Crooks and Liars yesterday. Our power was out. We had to find a cafe with power, make sure there was a power strip, make sure that uh, I had earbuds, <laughs> everything just to kind of get the day done. And I was in a bitchy mood because... I didn't even want to work today. And here I was having to go someplace else. And you just kept calm and did your, he, he turns into a project manager at that point to manage all the stress. And yeah. you did, you just had, okay, here's the power strip. Here's the earbuds. Here's the laptop. We're going here. We're going to do this. And, and you actually didn't even have to go with me, but you did. And you spent the afternoon together in a cafe. Um, well, Go back to the house, take the packages off the porch because right. we don't right. want to invite – and just keep keep track of the outage map. We have an outage map, yep. so make sure – And the kids are gone. They're with their dad yeah. this 
this week, but um, apparently the girls are are shopping all the sales online with their Christmas money. So we have yeah. all these every, every day. There's another box from makeup or body lotion or something. All their Christmas money is, I think, going to be gone by the time they get home. So, uh, but uh, getting those packages off the porch, you did that in the rain and uh, took care of everything. And I really appreciate that. Uh, you not taking my grumpy, grumpy mood. Uh, oh, please. Oh, please. <laughs> Personally. Uh, all, while, all while coughing up a lung. <laughs> all while say, coughing I, up a lung. Yes, you did that I, too. I, I, I just, and here's how I cope, Blue Gale. I pack it all down, my resentments <laughs> and rage down into a tiny, tiny ball. And then I pour whiskey on yeah. it. And at some <laughs> socially inappropriate occasion, I let it all come. At the art museum, I was going to start just screaming about Mark Rothko. Just like. <laughs> fucking rothko <laughs> this piece of shit i had to, you know what seeing this piece of shit art in mad men ruined that series for me <laughs> ruined it ruined i love that word but i know i love that word I, just, I know because ruined is is irrevocable irrevocable ruined <laughs> uh, I, we're, anyway, we're not gonna get we... into how many times i've lived with the word ruined in my life no. Anyway, good. To- but that's what we did on our on our Christmas that was vacation, our week. kids. That was our kid free yeah. week. Was a day without power and a day to the art museum. We had a good time. Yeah, we did. We, we did church, and we did. There were there have been a ton of funerals at church, so we did oh logistic gosh. stuff up for uh, that. Just, everybody's it's dying. Been very busy. <laughs> that's yeah. a terrible well, thing you know. to say and then laugh about. But I am uh, the titular head of the funeral committee, the funeral lunch committee at, at our church. Uh-huh. And uh, the pastor has warned me several times that the Christmas season is also the passing away season. It is. And so it's, just, it's it the is. busiest season for him anyway, doing four, four services with 300 people apiece on Christmas Eve. And then funeral, 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 funeral. And literally there have been four funerals in the past seven days. So then um, that, that's just something to kind of, Keep in the background if you're seeing that in your life or if you're going to see a lot of celebrities or whatever happens. You know, it, this is the time of year when people wait to pass away until their family, <laughs> they get to see their family. That's right. Or That's right. It just it, mm-hmm. it my, happens. My dad passed away the day before Christmas. Did he? Eve, so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. So it happens. It just, it happens. Uh, you want to talk um, about Jill Stein's um, recount sure. cash scam and she spent some of her campaign funds in a very interesting trip some of her allowance <laughs> that she thinks she should have spent on <laughs> um as you know jill stein is personally responsible for donald trump being president <laughs> um, there see see what i did there uh i'm sorry she, i'm i'm yeah. not trying to be on uh, i'm not trying to be uh glib about donald trump being president i think you guys know no. me well enough but the way my husband talks sometimes. I court controversy, Blue Gal. <laughs> like, let's teach the controversy, Drift Glass. Yeah, yeah. Um, controversial uh, figure no, Jill was, Stein is personally yes. responsible for the election of Donald Trump. Um, I was relaxing uh, in my home with my feet up reading my local newspaper uh, like I do to calm myself, to center myself and open to the editorial page. And half the editorial page is Hugh Hewitt's fucking column. Seriously, so. today. That's my, today. Today. Yeah. Today. My, so my morning, you know, my usual morning ritual of reading uh, George Pelicano about the destruction of Washington, D.C., and then crying a lot and then blogging for a while was interrupted by Hugh yeah. Hewitt. So I turned, as I do often, for comfort to the Daily Beast. And they're staring back at me is a story by um, uh, Charles Davis. Jill Stein's recount cash pays for her Russian legal defense. Oh, gracious me. It seems that uh, the millions and millions of dollars that Jill Stein collected, um, promising her donors they would have a say, uh, they would be able to vote as to where that money came from. This was the recount money, the 2016 recount money. Uh, They apparently didn't get a vote. And she's been sort of dipping and dipping and dipping in there for all kinds of things like paying uh, uh, campaign staff enormous amounts of money, traveling, things like that. Um, I'm not... Uh, surprised by this. Um, I am surprised by people who are surprised by mm-hmm, this. Mm-hmm. I am. I, I just, uh, every time I think we as a country uh, are undertaxed, I look at the enormous amounts of money people throw into obvious shithole scams mm-hmm. by people who are obviously there saying, 
Send me money to save democracy yeah. and, and never, ever fucking deliver. And, and then they count on the fact that, well, there's a bunch of other shit that happened. Maybe someone won't notice the fact that I, I didn't deliver on anything I promised, but I did keep your money. Yeah. Um, so it, it's just one of those things that would otherwise, in a very uh, swiftly moving river of madness, uh, would have gone unmentioned. But I thought, hey, why not drop in a little something about uh, Jill Stein? at the end of the year, because by this time next year, she will be forgotten. One of the Crookie Awards, I'm writing Crookie Awards over at Crooks and Liars. We do our year-end uh, filler posts <laughs> on on the awards of best and worst of the year. And one of them was the worst coverage of the midterms anywhere other than Fox was Steve Bannon doing his streaming, yeah. uh, where he keep, kept reminding people on the air who were with him that he is producing this show. <laughs> right. And, uh, but he, he runs something called citizens of the American Republic, which calls itself yes. a social welfare organization. I think the social welfare is Steve Bannon. Yeah. And, and, the, and they are quote, dedicated to making America great again via maximizing your all caps, your, citizenship value that's right it's a value proposition people so of course they're a 501c4 yes and as you say proof positive that there is a definite problem with our tax code we have a lot of extra money floating around <laughs> uh not enough of which is flowing in my direction well we are not a 501c4 drift glass or a 501c3 we could be blue cal we could or be a 501 a, anything we could be a church we could be a church tomorrow <laughs> I know the I know the paperwork. We could be at the professional left church. Of, oh my gosh! Of we won't ask any questions. No, I I want to fund the deep state with my taxes, drift glass. I, All of my taxes go to help pay the salaries of career prosecutors right now yeah. in the FBI. That's no, see, who I is, am paying. This is where we diverge. I want a podcast where we can interview Lenny Riefenstahl and only <laughs> and only talk about like aspect ratios of film. And never actually talk about the whole Nazi thing because that would make us uncomfortable. So yeah, we won't talk about the Nazi no. part. We just want to talk about aspect ratio. Yeah. So yeah. What, how do you? What do you think? What kind of lens do you use when you film yeah. the Nazis that are are what underwriting was the all your behind shit? that angle of yeah. Hitler? Yeah, that's really good. Did, did you? Is that because let's face it, that's the kind of that's the kind of platform and podcast where. There's there's big money in not asking people uncomfortable questions about their past affiliations and present affiliations Seriously. with horrible horrible groups of people. Um, Honestly, you know it's it's a nation of middle children who don't want to make anyone angry. And you know what? As I point as I mentioned today on Twitter, it's been 30 years since Rush Limbaugh was syndicated. And it's been Seriously, and, yeah, and it's yeah, been 20, 30 years. It's been 25 years since the GOP officially handed the party over to Gingrich and Limbaugh. And if you're a liberal with a public platform and you still haven't figured out how to take on conservatives, maybe you should get out of the business. Yeah, go go sell real estate. Yeah, do something or else. Something. There's a little you know, bigger there, There's world. other jobs out there for you besides yeah. trying to put together a podcast. Who are we talking about, Trip? We're Glass? talking about, well, there's, uh, uh, as someone pushed back a little, not pushed back, but sort of smirked, I said, this is a criticism that can be broadly applied. Yes, it is. If you are yes, if is. you are a liberal sitting across from, let's say, a Michael Gerson or a David Brooks or uh, Brett Stevens, and they're obviously you know jerking around the past and rewriting it to make it very convenient for them not to have to talk about their complicity, and you sit there and kind of nod and say, you know, my friend David makes a good point. My friend Brett makes a good point. You know, I think we have to disagree about this, but at least we're being civil about it. Then you're failing at liberalism. You're mm -hmm. failing at doing your duty during this time of war, this time of conflict. If you want to be on this team, you have an obligation to actually step the fuck up and do what you can to push back against what you have already identified as a terrible cancer on our democracy. If you can't do it, fine. Drift Glass is living proof that you don't have to have David Brooks on your show no. in order to provide a critique of David Brooks. No. <laughs> No. All right. Uh, Drift Glass, you have provided your, our listeners with an end of the year guessing game. Here are six, new, six news items, right. right? We've scoured our archives from one year ago, and we've cleverly hidden one story from December of 2017 
in among the following six stories. Can you guess which one? All right. So we'll alternate with these. I'll read the odd ones. How about that? You go right ahead. All right. Trump claimed that he has signed more legislation than any other president at this point in their term. Trump has actually signed the fewest number of bills into law of any president at this point in his term, dating back to Eisenhower. Number two. All right. That's number one. Thirty four percent of senior Trump administrations have resigned, been fired or or been reassigned this year. It's the highest departure rate of any administration in the last 40 years. All right. Forty four percent of Republicans think Trump successfully repealed the Affordable Care Act. Attacks on Mueller and the FBI are now constant as Trump uses his own GOP base exactly as it was designed to be used as a mindless battering ram. At a meeting on immigration, Trump said Haitians all have AIDS and complained that Nigerians would never go back to their huts in Africa. And finally, in The Atlantic magazine, Connor Friedersdorf has decided that the the never-Trumpers will be the only ones with the credibility to rebuild the GOP. Spoiler alert, never-Trumper David Frum is a senior editor at The Atlantic. How can you guess? All right, so you did not, in in our notes, you did not put which one it is. No, I didn't. from last year. I didn't. But I'm going to guess. You go right ahead, Blue Gal. Because I know you. Yes. And I know what you're like. And uh, I'll bet all of these are from last year. They're all from last year. <laughs> they're all from a fucking year ago. And they are absolutely indistinguishable from everything that's happening today. They are. They really they are. are. You, you can just squint your eyes and see exactly this shit happening. You're not imagining it. Nothing has changed. Except nope. an election happened. Yes, an election happened, and that's going to bring a big change. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, so, Drift Glass, let's do an actual news roundup. Womp, womp. Okay, fine. <laughs> Go, let, let's, let's, hey, you, nobody else is doing it this week. Uh, we got to do one. I, well, I don't know. I, I, Steve Kornacki will read numbers at you for an hour on MSNBC, oh, which is very exciting. You were, you were funny last night when Steve Kornacki was, Republicans are happy and Democrats are unhappy. Yes. <laughs> I found that a clip from Monty Python, Spectrum. <laughs> this graph shows 20% of the people. This shows 34%. This is a whopping 48% of the people. Telling numbers indeed. And it was just Monty we Python. We say this with love, Steve Kornacki, yes. because there's nobody like you on election no. night. We need you no, there. We need you That's there. The but when it comes to that sort of holiday period filler, um, oh, we yeah. had to it, turn it, away it's, from. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Do you know Politico is whining about Hillary Clinton today? Oh, Why really? won't she go away? Democrats are concerned. Well, oh, we should we should also <laughs> we should also mention that this is the time of the year when the Sydney Awards come out. You mean you mean David Brooks's Sydney Awards? Yes, David Brooks's. Um, I hesitate to point this out, but a, a decade ago, next month, mm-hmm. Andrew Sullivan and I will have shared an award. Uh, back when they gave awards for blogging. Oh wow! Yeah, the, this was the last year of the Weblog Award. That's right, 2008, uh-huh. the That's weblog. Right. Those were a big deal. Those were a big deal. And yeah. uh, Mr. Andrew Sullivan, who has since gone on to uh, various forms of infamy and uh, never never missed a meal. He's been hired and, and everywhere all the time. Um, he and I, he was like best blogger and I was best independent blogger or something like that. Right. Um, yeah. And then I killed the award. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't give it anymore no, after oh, that. Fuck it. Screw it. We're done. We're done because it's hard work. You got to count votes. It's very complicated. Um, so they stopped giving because blogging is dead, as we all know. <laughs> so a decade later, I'm you know me and uh, David Brooks. This was a, sort of a perfect um, Washington Beltway media moment. It was. When, it was. You want to you want to tell them what the well it was Axios's newsletter highly recommended David Brooks's column recommending Andrew Sullivan. <laughs> yes. Who, who was awarded not one, as David Brooks said, which is which is rare indeed, but two of the coveted Sydney Awards that David Brooks uh, does instead of writing actual columns at the end of the year. And uh, one was for the opioid epidemic, which is fine. And one was for sort of the, the, the tribalism and how religion has fled our lives and We've replaced politic God with politics in our hearts, and how isn't that a terrible tragedy? Um, which is just a god awful column uh, that I knew would, it, and it was of course celebrated across uh, a, a very narrow bandwidth of very wealthy people, all with columns and TV shows, etc. As 
as a, a glorious uh, call to arms for I don't know who the fuck would care, but the nine people who still believe that centrism is a thing. Right, um, right. And was, I don't fault David Brooks for giving away no, awards at the end of the year because all. everybody we, – we're doing that. Everybody does that. It is – a notoriously slow news time between Christmas and New Year's and that you have to do something and looking back on the year is fine. But uh, this was a real circle jerk as well. Yeah. well he he was on book leave for or whatever the hell it is when you take a month off. And he did come back long enough to declare that the center has been rediscovered and and <laughs> And mourn the death of the Weekly Standard. So apparently there are things for which David Brooks will break his vacation, one of which is talking about how awesome the Weekly Standard was and what a cruel, uh, oppressive, one of the great monstrous acts of history, Blue Gal, all in all of history, that the Weekly Standard, where he was a senior editor and, and did some of his shittiest right. writing and slagged liberals for years, <laughs> uh, got bought and gutted. So um, – well, he he's very upset that the Weekly Standard was bought and or gutted and destroyed, right. but he doesn't want anyone to go back and read no. anything and remind him of anything that he actually no. wrote at the Weekly Standard. So, ain't I a stinker? All yeah. right, um, let's do a news roundup, Drift Glass. All right, Trump is finally shamed into visiting American troops serving abroad and blows it in every <laughs> way imaginable. Oh my yeah. gosh. Uh, a partisan slander fest. He handed out shitty Trump hats. He lied to the troops about their pay raises yeah. as if they wouldn't know what was in their paychecks. Uh -huh. uh, and apparently he tweeted a video revealing uh, a covert U.S. Navy SEAL team deployed in Iraq, which broke combat operational security by posting the faces and location of the special operations unit. Uh, the government of Iraq has asked uh, the American people to leave their country yes, now, now based on Donald Trump's yeah. trip. <laughs> yeah. So uh, every which way you can fuck this up. Of course, this was a triumph. Um, I'm sure Hugh Hewitt yeah. views this as a triumph. I'm, Van Jones, I, I, I keep waiting for Trump is now president. Um, and yeah, we'll keep waiting. Yeah. The government shut down, by the way. This is Friday. Uh, the St. Louis Arch was closed. We weren't planning on going there anyway, but we were informed that it was closed. And we said – yeah, the arch was closed because the wall isn't being yeah, built. Yeah, because right. that makes perfect sense. Uh, the government is shut down until whenever. Uh, negotiations between Democrats, Republicans, and the White House. I love the I, – I borrowed the sentence from uh, someplace. Democrats, Republicans, and the White House, as if those are three different groups. Um, right, they're not. Right, Democrats right. and Republicans. It has left about 420,000 federal workers uh, working without pay and another 300,000 furloughed straight up. And the St. Louis Arch, as I mentioned, was closed. Trump lied again and claimed that most of the people not getting paid during the government shutdown are Democrats. This, to me, was one of the most stupid and heinous things that he did this week. And he did a lot of horrible things. Yeah. I mean, he just must think his base are idiots. Well, and he's right. That we've said that many he's times right. before. <laughs> I'm shutting down the country to own the libs. Yeah. yeah. So many of them are Democrats. However, he his previous lie was that many of the workers wanted him to shut down the government because they wanted the wall so badly. Yeah. So we don't know which it is, but I have a feeling he's just going to spew out whatever sounds good in his head. It's neither. And uh, until until uh, as is the Republican strategy now. Uh -huh to wait until the Democrats take control to fix the problem. Right. And then they can blame the Democrats for it. anything they want to. Let's all face it. And That's if you have forgotten 2008, when there was an economic disaster that hit this country hard, and uh, George W. Bush was asked about saving the auto industry. Auto yes, industry. Was. I haven't made up my mind yet. Yeah. Well, he said John McCain suspended his campaign to sit on a like a lump on a log and do nothing. Um, right. Uh, uh, Mitt Romney said Mitt that Romney specifically said he didn't think that we should save the auto right. should bail him out. Private yeah. capital should do that. And and knowing that was never going to happen. I think he wanted to pick up. You know, I think he wanted to buy the auto industry for a dollar and just hope it would right. crash <laughs> and he could afford to buy it. Uh, but Republicans right. just burned the place to the ground and then ran around in circles freaking out because. Guess what? I mean, even um, uh, Mrs. Uh, even Al Greenspan finally said, uh, "I guess markets don't regulate themselves." I guess yeah. the last fifty yeah. years of my life and all the Anne Rand bullshit I spew is actually bullshit. 
sorry about yeah. that, guys. And, you know, yeah. uh, but so waiting, waiting for the Democrats to take over is now the Republican strategy. Right. So they can get back to doing what they do really well, which is sitting on the sidelines and bitching about everything, sabotaging and everything Democrats tried to do with the able assistance of everyone in the fucking Beltway media who will all agree right. not to remember anything that happened in the past. Um, Trump's lawyers, this is so perfect. I don't even know what to say. Asked to delay the emoluments case against him because the government is shut down. Yeah. Oopsie. Acting Attorney General Matt Bench Jockey Whitaker claimed he was an academic All-American while playing football at the University of Iowa. He wasn't, but he had an opportunity to lie, so he took yes. it. Yes. Why, why skip that? Uh, as yeah. we mentioned, Michael Cohen's cell phone was briefly activated near Prague around the time the Russia meeting described in the Steele dossier. Once again, everything in the Steele dossier uh, has either been verified or has not been knocked down. Most of the stuff in it has turned out to be correct. Yep. Would you read the next one? Please? I will, because it's incredibly sad and it's infuriating. Uh, an eight-year-old boy from Guatemala died in U.S. custody and border protection custody. Uh, the second death of an immigrant child in the agency's care this month. This month. I, I don't know what to say about that other than these fuckers have to go and they have to pay for this. They have, they have to pay yep. for this. They have to, they have to be held to account for this. This cannot be, uh, this cannot be skipped. This can't, we can't keep pretending that they're just another political party that makes mistakes. They're sadistic by design. They're cruel by design. They're ignorant and racist by design. They built, their political machine to do shit like this. And now that it's happening, too many people want to pretend this is some sort of fluke or accident or one off. And it's not. It's no, who they it are. It is a deterrent. It is a deterrent for brown people to enter the United States. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. We'll kill your kid. Don't travel here because we will kill your kid. That's what they're saying. Yep. That's a, that is not my country. No. No. All right. The daughters of a foot doctor said their late father diagnosed Trump with bone spurs to help him avoid the Vietnam War as a favor to his father, Fred Trump. Yeah. Anyone surprised? He didn't have burn, bone spurs? Anyone, and that, yeah, he, they faked it. Yeah, he, It was a shitty excuse anyway, and he had to fake the shitty excuse. Mm -hmm. uh, Donald Trump tried to ruin Christmas for a seven-year-old. You know, you think... Yeah. What, what else can I fuck up? Hey, here's a thought. <laughs> Kid calls in an absence. He, just, he doesn't. They. He doesn't know how to talk to children, and that's. Or, I get that. There's a lot of people out there that don't. So much of what's going on in this world right now is because Donald Trump doesn't ha listen to anybody but himself. It, his great brain. Well, if he had a staff that he would listen to even a modicum of listening do a little bit of listening some of these things wouldn't happen well and, and you say he doesn't know how to talk to children who does he know how to talk to mobsters, <laughs> well, that's true mobsters that's true. he doesn't really. know how to talk to women he does he knows how to talk to uh sycophants yeah. that's it dictators sycophants and mobsters yeah. that's he's really good at those yep. things and yep. and his yep. base who love him, who love him so very much. But they, yeah, it doesn't matter what he says to them. They're going to love right. him because they can't be proven wrong either. All right. Trump has at least twice in the past few weeks lashed out to his acting attorney general, yeah. complaining that the prosecutors, Matt Whitaker overseas, filed charges that made him look bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These bad. charges against me make me look bad. Matt, get in there. This is stupid. By contrast, Bill Clinton's brief tarmac chat about grandchildren with Loretta Lynch was grounds enough for Republicans to launch hearing after hearing and demand her recusal. Yeah, but that happened yes. when in the past, which yeah. doesn't exist. So let's not talk about it or worry about it or in any way draw a contrast between the two because that might make our Republican friends uncomfortable. The incoming acting chief of staff said – Donald Trump now realizes that he, quote, does not have the authority to fire the Federal Reserve chairman. Oopsie doopsie. Uh, Mick Mulvaney claimed that, quote, it's not at all unusual for a president to complain about the actions of the Fed. That's true. However, Trump broke a 25-year tradition of presidents refraining from making public comments on Fed interest rates, move, uh, Fed interest rate moves to preserve its independence. So, you know, he also more... said that the only the only I, I repeat, the only problem with our economy is the Fed. Yeah, <laughs> I can think of one other problem. 
Trump directed Mike Pompeo to fire Jim Mattis after the defense secretary had already resigned. Yeah, yeah. he's leaving next week instead of in February because yeah. all of a sudden Trump found out on the TV. Yeah, he didn't read the resignation no. letter that he's... that Mattis wrote. Yeah. He just found out it was embarrassing to him on the TV. Wait a minute. And then wanted him to leave two months early. What he said, yeah. fuck face. He meant me. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's it. We're done because he's illiterate. He doesn't read anything. Yeah. He doesn't know anything. He's just I think a, he's got a vision problem and he won't wear glasses. Yeah, I really I think, think he has – that's the problem. I yeah. think he's got a comprehension problem too. I really don't <laughs> think he, – he doesn't yeah, understand. He's not mentally there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Supreme Court rejected, yay, the Trump administration's request to automatically reject asylum bids by immigrants who illegally cross the U.S.-Mexico border. It's a small victory, but we will take small victories now. We will take small victories and by one vote – Yep. In the in the state Senate, mm -hmm. Ohio uh, upheld the veto that was going to make abortion illegal, essentially, in the state of Ohio. Yeah. The state House overturned uh, the governor's veto, and it was just going to be overturned. But one vote in the Senate, in the state Senate in Ohio, saved it. And like you say, small victories. Uh, Steve Mnuchin took his trophy wife to Mexico during the shutdown. Yes. And uh, from vacation in Mexico, called the heads of major banks to check on their liquidity and let them know everything's OK. Please don't crash the markets while I'm gone. Having a vacation with my trophy wife in Mexico uh, while the government is shut down over the wall with Mexico that Mexico is supposed to pay for. Yeah. Did I get that right? Yeah, it's <laughs> dude. I don't mean to cause panic, but do you have like a lot of money laying around, like a whole lot of money laying around? Because that'd be really great if you had like a shitload of money laying around, just in case I don't know something might happen. Not saying it will, just saying I'm in Mexico with my trophy wife, and if shit hits the fan, maybe it'd be a good idea. Have a big mountain of money laying around, just in case. Also, Trump floated the idea of firing Mnuchin to fix the stock market. Yeah, because what he knows how to do is fire people. He's really no, good at firing that, people. He knows how to send someone else to fire people. Right, he's people. really good at passively aggressive, aggressively <laughs> bitching. You see, he really is every conservative. He's really good at talking yeah, shit is, about yeah. people behind their back. And when it comes to actually doing something, he jobs it out to someone else because he's a fucking coward. You know, yeah. old Bone yeah. Spurs is a coward. Ah, shocking, isn't it? We want to take a moment and thank everyone for all of your support this year. We love you. Happy New Year. May 2019 be better than 2018 in every way. And uh, do you have anything else you want to add to that, Drift Glass? Uh, just how delighted we are um, with all the feedback we get, whether it's over the transom or through the post office box or uh, email or text or whatever. All of the um, uh, support we get, all the checking I get. Uh, I had a, a listener tell me that the Brock's Candy um, – not Brock's Candy, I'm sorry, the, the movement of Ferrara Pan to the post office in Chicago, which I did mention, uh, was not exactly as I reported it to be. It was an executive move, and the workers are still on the bubble. Um, so we, believe me, I am deeply impressed with the precision with which we are listened to and how often we are corrected. We love our pedants, our pedants, <laughs> and we love our atheists. And uh, our critics as well. And we deeply appreciate your support, uh, however, whatever form it comes in. We know that a lot of you listen to us when you're out in a red state all by yourself or when you're exercising or out walking your dog or out with your cat. We hope you're not ignoring your family to listen to the podcast. But we understand that some families kind of suck. So maybe you have to take time away from them. Yeah. Um, and we're just incredibly happy and grateful. And still, considering this is our – let me check – to make sure this is our 473rd uh, consecutive Friday episode of The Professional Left. We have no intention of slowing down. Despite what my voice might sound like now, this is all temporary. And we look forward to a, a wonderful and uh, exciting and probably maddening and exhausting and mm -hmm. et cetera, 2019 with y'all. And if you know anybody who's looking for a good podcast, uh, slide our name their way. because yeah, we, we are, we're, love it when you share our show. Our Either one-on-one -on -one or uh, yeah. on the social media. Thank you for doing uh, our that. Our show grows organically. Uh, we don't have any other media outlets 
uh, promoting us. Uh, we, we don't have a uh, presence anywhere on television or any other radio station. This is just us. We don't have so, a marketing budget. No. <laughs> Either. So you're you're our, our marketing team, yeah. uh, along with uh, Tammy, our angel nerd who does yes. uh, oh, the Lord's work yeah. for us. Uh, so thank you and and uh, happy New Year. We're looking forward to 2019 with you. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website at Internet Kitty, sent in by you, the listeners. This week we have two beautiful Internet Kitties, Rigby and Blaze. They are Ooh. orange kitties. Par excellence, you have to go visit them, Rigby and Blaze, at our Facebook page and website. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is not a 501c3. This is our job. <laughs> there are many good 501c3s out there. Just so There sure clear. are. There are yeah. some really good charities out there. Yeah. But this is just our job. We do this for you. Uh, we appreciate it if you can support the show with a $5 contribution. Approximately one half of 1% of you donate to this podcast and we so appreciate it if you haven't done that yet you still can see our website proleftpod.com for details we have paypal we have a postal address we have uh, patreon we have all kinds of things we have had a letter uh, from one of our longtime listeners asking us uh, doing some financial planning for the year ahead and asking us what's the best way uh, to donate in terms of fees and so forth and making sure we get the most bang for their buck. And the deal is whatever is easiest for you. Um, there are some people who uh, send us a check from their bank account and pay us like a monthly bill and send us $5 in a check form. That gets the full $5 to us. Uh, if you use PayPal or if you use Patreon or if you use GoFundMe, they take a fee, uh, obviously, in order to send us the money. But those fees are tax deductible business expenses for us. So you're not really you're costing us a lot in terms of uh, if that's easier for you. We're happy to take that as well. Uh, so whatever's easiest for you is the way to do it. Thank you. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter or any other social media, and we thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Cow, the Internet Kitties are looking forward to David Brooks milking the whole Grover thing into at least three columns on tribalism and the decline of American culture. And the Internet Kitties wish you a happy new year. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.